So when we're given very weird shaped polygons, we gotta we we sometimes have to break them down into different components to be able to or different segments in order to solve for area. But in this shape, we also need to solve for perimeter. And perimeter is asking us to find the entire distance around. Well, if I follow it around, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sides. But I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dimensions. That means three sides are not labeled. And before I can find perimeter, I have to find those missing dimensions. Well, the nice thing is the rules of parallel lines and things like that. I know that if this line down here is four and the parallel line above it going the exact same distance is also going to be four. Okay. Then, so we go up one, then down two, over, down, over, up. Okay. Now I don't know this distance here. So I'm going to label this. I'm going to put an X here for now. I don't know this entire distance, but I have some clues. I know that this entire line here is 12. And this line here and this line here also go that exact same distance. I like to think of it as a spaghetti noodle. I have an, I have an unbroken spaghetti noodle up here, and then I have one down here that got broken and offset. It's still the same length altogether, but I have to then account for two different pieces making up that space. So I know that this equals the same as this and this. So if I have x and 6 is the same distance as 12, I know then that x has to be 6 to make up that difference. So instead of having an unknown dimension, I then have a six. Do not trust the proportion of the drawing, okay? You're like, well, wait, that's way longer than that six is. It doesn't matter, it's all just about the numbers, okay? So now I know that that is six. This though is unknown. This is a little tougher, okay? Because I know that this length is six, but this length extends down into this area. So I can't say that this length is the same as that because they don't line up. But I know that this amount right here is two, which means this amount here is also two. So what is this length in order to have it and two be a total distance of six? Well, I would need this part to be four since this part, this distance is two. Well, if I take this four, that's the same as this gap, okay? I'm gonna make a little squiggly line. I know that this has a dimension of four. So I know this is a tricky, tricky concept, Woo. But, but we got it, okay? Okay, so if I have a two here and a four here, I have an unknown space here, but I know this entire length is 10. So I need to set it up. I have a two plus a four plus some unknown dimension is giving me a length of 10. Two and four gives me six. What does X need to be to add up to 10? X has to be four. So this missing dimension here is going to be four. I know it's okay, but it was actually important that we found this dimension because we're going to need it when we solve for area later on. So it's worth that effort. Just knowing that if I extended this across, if I take off that two, it means this length had to be four if that whole thing was six. Okay. All right. Now let's double check. Do we have 10 sides? One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Okay. And we also got to make sure we clean up after ourselves. Otherwise, we might try to throw in some extra numbers. Okay, so let's, all right, so if I have a 10 here, a four here, a two here, a 12, a six, a six, a two, a six, a four, and a four. Let me double check. I had counted up that there were 10 sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. All sides have been accounted for, and I didn't accidentally short myself a length. 
And I'm just going to start adding in whatever order makes it easiest for me. I know six and four make 10, another six and another four for another 10. Um, I have a two, a two, and a six for another 10. Uh, and then I can go 10 and 12 for 22 plus four gives me 26. So I have a six and two, three, four, and five. So my perimeter is P equals 56. And because it didn't have a unit of measurement, you need to create one. Since we don't know what it is, we call it units. On the test, it is imperative that you are labeling the units of measurement because Canvas has the, the measurements included in its recognized answers. So if you drop them, it's not gonna, it's gonna be like, hey, I don't count this answer right, even if your digits were the same, okay? Now it's time for area. And area is just trying to find this inner amount. There was a very convoluted, convoluted way to do it online or on the examples that you had earlier here. We're gonna make this, break this into recognizable shapes. Okay, our simplest way of finding area has always been length times width. We can't do that here. But what we can do is we can break down these weird shapes into spaces that do allow us to do length times width. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break this into one rectangle. Now I can multiply length times width. Length times width is 10 times four for 40 units squared. I also see that this is six across and six high. So I'm going to break this into a rectangle as well to get six times six for 36 uh, units squared. Now I have this middle dimension. We found out that this length across was six. And in our weird, like figuring out what this was, we found out that this was four. Guess what? My length then here is four. So, or my width is, so I have a six times a four. Six times four gives me 24 units squared. So what I've done is I've broken this big weird shape into smaller normal shapes that then I can find, well, how much area did I have all together? Well, this section had 40. This section had 24, and this section had 36, so I can add them all up. 24 and 36 gives me 60. So I'm gonna chunk that down into 60, and when I add 40 to it, it gives me 100. Well, so we can put 100 square units, or if you were typing this into your test, you could put units, carat, squared. But if you spell it out, you need square units instead of saying units squared, spelling it out. It's going to recognize the square first and then that um, whatever the measurement value was. Look, look familiar? It should. We've been seeing this a lot. And guess what? It's also on the test. Okay, we really got to make sure you guys know what this means. All right. A negative exponent does not mean a negative answer. This number itself is positive, and this is the only number that exists and is being multiplied by itself. The exponent is just telling me how many times I have that. And whenever I have a negative exponent, it's doing that because it has taken a fraction and presented it as a whole number. And the only way you can do that, or less than a whole, even a decimal and present it as a whole number, the only way you can do that is if you put a negative on the exponent. To, to, to evaluate that or solve it and get the negative off of that, we take the 10 and instead of being 10 as a whole number, we turn it into a fraction and then we flip it. Still a positive number is just the first small one. So then we go 10 to the third power, 10 times 10 times 10. There are three zeros involved in that. So that means that I have three zeros in my answer. It is one thousandths of a whole. If I wanted to, I can express that as a decimal, 0 0.001. 
So if I have 0 0.001 and I add it to, well, we've already found out what 10 to the third is, it's a thousand. I have 1,000 one hundred. I do not have a zero. Okay. Uh, the only way I could have a zero is if this was negative 10 to the third, because then without that, well, even if it was in parentheses, I have a negative 10 times a negative 10, which is a positive 100, and then positive 100 times a negative 10 is negative 1000. In that case, then you could get a zero, but only if your base is negative and you have an odd exponent. No other way. Okay, because when you move to um, your next level in math, you will sometimes be asked to, oh, if I have one fifth and I need to work on it with, with something else, I can't work on it while it's a fraction. I need it as a whole number. So how do I turn it into a whole number? I pop a negative onto this exponent. So this then becomes five to the negative one. It's not a negative value. It's a less than a whole number value. So just by putting a negative on my exponent, I'm given the power to flip and have a whole number to work with in solving. A serving of cereal is one third of a cup. And how many servings, how many servings, sorry, my R, my R looks like another V, servings in nine cups. Just because my one third comes first does not mean that I put it first in my equation. Because what it's saying is I have nine cups of something. Okay, I'm gonna take I got this, this rectangular shape and I have nine cups of cereal in it. And each serving is one third of a cup. So if I imagine my little teeny tiny measuring cup and I go in there and I scoop, oh, I scooped it out once. I took up one third, oh, I scoop it out again. I have another third, I have another serving. Oh, I scoop it out again. I have three servings, three servings. Well, one and one and one is three out of three. One cup. One cup gave me three servings. Okay, so what I'm trying to find is if I have all of this and I take a third of a cup out, and a third of a cup out, and a third of a cup out, and a third of a cup out, how many times am I able to do this? That repeated taking out is a division. The first number is always how much exists. How much do I have? I have nine whole cups. And how much am I drawing out of that each time? What am I trying to take out of it? I'm trying to take out one third of a cup. And when I'm repeatedly being asked to take something out or find out how many of these little pieces exist within this whole, I have to divide it, which then means to solve it, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal when it's a fraction. So, Nine times three over one. Well, anything over one means that is a whole number. So I have nine times three to get, I have a total of 27 servings. And I know that's right because when I just took out a third, took out a third, took out a third, when I took out three of them, I had one cup. So if I did that again, I would take out another three for another cup and another three for another cup, okay? So I know there were 27 servings.